try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody and stain from the people who deceive Hello everybody and welcome back to Flames Pyro Art for Beginners and Beyond and We're carrying on with our eagle today My brother has bought me a set of really fancy glasses that zoom up to 160 times zoom so I can get really close up on the feathers but for today's exercise what I wanted to do was start talking about shaping a bird's head now obviously when we've done the beak and the face of our bird we need to then show some depth to the rest of the head don't we you know, we don't want it to all just look like flat squished you know, we have to shape our feathers. Hopefully you can see me on the camera clearly there. So what I'm starting to do, I'm using my micro skew again. I'm doing that for the whole piece. Because it gives me the option to really get underneath each feather. You know, go really deep into the detail. My uh, heat setting is at setting three at the moment. Excuse me. So it's just a medium heat because I don't want the heat set too high because I want this to be a gentle process. And what I'm looking to do now is start shaving these outside feathers. Everything needs to be shaded and darker, round, you know, so it, so it gives it a more depth, a tunnel sort of look. And it has to be done by feel. Really, you just have to slowly gather your way to the shape you require. And because obviously even though they're white feathers we can't show them as just pure white otherwise we'd have to get you know colored pencils and everything and then it wouldn't be a piece of pyrography would it <laughs> so even though they're white we have to put some i don't know what you call it is it hue h-u-e warmth or whatever saturation sepia you know we have to put some shading that's the easiest word is to use is shading down. And it also then gives you opportunity to uh, put some lift into your feathers, you know. If you saw this bird in the out in the wild and it was sat there perched. You know, there, there would be some beautiful uh, lift in the feathers. And, you know, a real thick plumage. That's what we want to get. We don't want to have a flat looking bird. So little areas like I'm touching on here. By simply darkening up inside the area you start to add some depth and you don't want to go crazy and do it everywhere but in certain areas you do want to add some more depth Another thing we need to think about is do we want every feather on the head like you know sat on top of the one or the top one or are we going to mix it up a little you know could we say there's a feather that is sticking out out of place 
No, it's not in formation. There's a feather behind it. It would have to be a darker spot to pull that feather forward. See if hopefully I can show you what I mean. Now bear in mind everybody, you know, I do go into ridiculous amount of detail, you know. I get obsessed with a piece of work and I will go into as much fine detail as possible. You do not have to do this. This is just, I just really love the art form and I'm always trying to push the boundaries for myself, my own learning. And this feather is sat on top of the shading here. And by keeping our heat at a nice medium, we use a technique called layering, which is we're going over and over the same area till we find that perfect shading tone, and then we stop once we find the tone. That's why I use the low and slow method of pyrography because you don't want to zoom past that perfect moment when you you've absolutely nailed it and your heat's too high oof, and you've gone past it. And as we all know with pyrography, it's much easier to go darker than it is to go lighter. And no. Oh, to go lighter is, oh no, get the sandpaper out, wreck my whole piece, may as well start again. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't want to get to this stage now of work and then go too dark. Everything you'd sat for, for all those hours would be gone. But patience is a key skill. And what I will do out throughout the day, which you won't see, because uh, you wouldn't want to sit through the whole day of me shading this bird up, I'll work my way round the whole outside edge and start bringing that shading in until I hit a point somewhere around the face that will stop so this is all pushing things back and that is the uh, the key skill to pyrography, isn't it, is trying to take a flat piece of wood and creating something that doesn't look flat. If you can do that, then it's a success. You've triumphed. get there is a long road as I've said this back a few times on the uh, videos we say it takes 10,000 hours to master anything in life whether you know tennis football golf any of the arts you know, a musical instrument, 10,000 hours, and then you say you are a true master of that, whatever it is that is 
your burning passion if you've got 10,000 hours in it because most of us it'd probably be work wouldn't it we do 10,000 hours a year of work <laughs> should all demand more money as your bosses say you're actually a master of your job and you want a master's wage you can imagine that in the end a loaf of bread would be like 50 pounds greatest thing I did for myself personally which will give you a little pearl of my uh, own journey is not a lie is I stopped watching uh, the news permanently I do not watch the news ever you may say well you don't keep up with current affairs well current affairs are all murder death kill so why would I want to subject myself to hearing about murder death and kill and so I don't and my life has been so much enriched by not listening to the news anymore and I will never go back Give me a wood burner and some, some tools to, to get a nice flat smooth piece of wood and that's it, you can leave me to it, I'm happy with that. lockdown uh, gave many challenges didn't it result and many changes to all our lives as well in many ways I went I've been through many changes this year this year has been easily the worst year of my life but I'm still here and now I've got a smile on my face I withstood everything that happened to me survived it was maybe a lesson I had to learn and part of my journey I'm still here able to create my art which for me is a blessing see uh, you will find the right handed person working on the right side of the bird is much easier this is the, the off side as well as mate so I'll just quickly tell you um, as you see this bird obviously with a beak the light is coming in from this way so this off side is slightly darker than this side because the light is coming in from this way as we can tell by the beak, which the beak isn't finished yet by the way isn't it? so this side is, will be slightly darker than that but this side is easier to work on for a right hander than that side is and vice versa the left hander will find it easier than that side than this Isn't it always the case when we're filming? Uh, someone's got pinging messages on my phone. I'll start ringing. 
that's the usual one, Nickelman Solar. So just take time and just gradually shade these feathers up. Let it just uh, do it, you know, gently in its own time. Work your way inwards to the point where you want it to be the the main front. Along the way, you will find many opportunities to really lift those feathers. And that's one that's really far from being black, and it's not a 150 times zoom because if I zoom right over. I can see into mega fine detail now. So if I put my uh, reading glasses on and then put my glasses over, these new glasses over the top, I can see into absolutely minute detail. lights on them, I'll turn the switch on it in a minute, just to make them even cooler, a birthday present from my brother, brother. so thank you Paul. they're already in use, where I want to go darker and lift the plumage and here's an interesting area So you will do that all round the head of the bird. And that said, it takes time, you know, then we'll flip it round. Working on it upside down. Because this, these back feathers are further away, you know, they, they are on the horizon of what you can see of the bird, you know, when it goes off around the back, you can't see them anymore. This, these feathers are as important, if not more important, than the ones we had around the front of the face. Because if we don't shade these back ones correctly, then we have a flat bird. If 
you haven't got a micro skew, I would look into buying one. You can use, a, say, an extra small space shader. You couldn't get as intricate as what you can with a skew. A skew is for people like me who want to go into ridiculous level of detail. You know, you don't have to do this. There are other machines as well that obviously... Uh, I know of the Peter Child spare tip that is very small. That could possibly get you into these tight areas. start with I'm just flicking a bit of shading into the, each feather looking at what I've got up there because I made this up in my mind this plumage of feathers I'm sure we can all make a head of feathers up from our imagination and as soon as you make a start you know then you can just carry on kind of building upon that People often ask, how long does it take you to do a piece of art? It's a question I can never answer, because I have no idea. I never really time it. You know, a piece of art is done when it's done. There's a long way to go on this, you know. But this is only the first uh, leg of the journey. I've got much harder challenges to come when we go to the dark feather. But each time we do things like this, we learn something new, don't we? So, good practice. Another little neat trick for you is every now and again when you're doing your shading to shape your bird's head, stop, take a photograph with your phone and have a look at it and it will tell you whether you need to go darker, you know, which areas need work, you know, to make that shape that we've been discussing. Why many of us take pictures and we put the latest WIP, the latest work in progress. You know, it goes through many different stages. I'm laying my pen slightly on a tilt so the side bit is slightly brushing against the wood and it's just adding that little gentle bit of heat to the edges as well of them feathers so it's adding that bit of shading already for me if I get my pen on the perfect angle it's also just gently heating where we've be shaded. But that is the lesson for today. That's about 25 minutes and I know people uh, don't like to go for too long. Let me just spin it.
There we are anyway. So that was the lesson for today is bringing your shading in to get more three dimensional look to your bird. And at the end of the day, I should post a picture of where I've got to with the shading of the bird. So at the end of the video, right at the after all the end titles, I should put a picture up of where I finished for the day. Okay, so take care of everybody. Happy pyroing. Enjoy yourselves and keep wood burning. Much love to everybody. Take care and I will see you all again soon. Bye for now. Step one, wake up early, gonna rise with the sun. Step two, get some good, some food in you. Step three, you grow hard about what you wanna be. Step four, fuck everybody, just do your thing. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up.